Namaste. We continue. Yes, so yesterday we discussed about Sartha Gurvata Yo Buddhi Prayatnanta Paradaya Guna Proktaha. So we also understood how this represents this whole process of our interaction with the universe and how by instinct, intellect, and intuition we are able to gain a deep understanding of nature to purify our mental tools and then go to a higher level of existence. So next is explained karma. Prayatna di karma cheshtita muchite. Karma is going to be defined in two ways. One is conscious action and the or you know action by will. And the other is action that happens, you know, automatically in nature, like when a chemical reaction action happens, that is not happening by will, there is no choice. If hydrogen, oxygen come together in the proper manner it will form H2O. There is no choice. Like humans we have a choice. Kartum akartum anyathava kartum shakyate. I can decide. So prayatna di karma cheshti na muchyate. So we discussed yesterday also how prayatna works by sukha, dukha, icha, dvesha. Usually our prayatna is based on icha and dvesha which is conditioned by the previous Sukhas and Dukhas that we have experienced. But with Buddhi we can exercise choice. I can decide to do or not to do. So when I am confronted by something, I am getting tempted to do like this, I can bring in my intellect and take a decision to Do it in a different way. So, prayatna di karma cheshti da muchyade. Whatever we do is resulting in action. So, this is how we are programmed. We have an experience, sukha, then we get an icha, and according to the icha, we do a prayatna, and that results in a particular karma. So, that is a sequence. Anubhava leading to sukha. From that comes an icha, again to get that sukha. From that icha comes a prayatna, and that prayatna results in a karma. Then second time, sometimes dukkha will come, not sukha. So first time you had ice cream, it was so nice. Second time you get a cold and fever, so now it is not so nice. So second time you have a dvesha. So then you have a dvesha, then you have again another prayatna which is now different from the previous prayatna. So if you start analyzing ourselves, we can find that all our prayatnas are conditioned by the sukha and dukkha that we are. So our cheshta is all coming out of this. So the question here is, whenever you are doing a cheshta, you can ask yourself, is it, this is what we call as vasanas. 
Ichha dvesha that has come from previous experiences of Sukha and Dukkha. That sum total is called Vasana. So how can we overcome the Vasana? It is not easy. But by using discrimination, intelligence, gradually we can learn over a lot of, because the more strong your Ichha is, because Sukha, Ichha Prayatna. Again, if you get Sukha, that Ichha becomes strengthened. Again, if you will get a Sukha, that is how addiction happens. I took some drugs, then I get a Sukha, then I have an Ichha to get it again. Next time again, I repeat it. The more repetitions you are having, the more strong your Ichha becomes. So then Buddhi, Buddhi will not be able to overcome that Ichha. You know that it is wrong, but still you will say it's okay. I will indulge. That is the power of Ichha. So all this together we call as Vasana. Vasana means that which stays. That which does not go away. It stays back. It's not easy to remove it. So sometimes you can go and see in hotels, non-vegetarian places, when you take the glass, it will still smell of that meat. That's Or egg. Egg leaves a smell that doesn't go. So it stays back. So you are full, we are all filled with such vasanas or tendencies. So that is the concept here. That in order to, order to overcome these vasanas, you have to keep discriminating. They also say with Guru's grace alone the vasanas will go away. It's not easy by, for ourselves to remove all by ourselves. But if you start taking the effort, eventually, you know, you may get a grace that comes. By our own effort alone, Shastras are not telling that vasanas chaya will happen. But we have to still put the effort. So what we have as effort is our discrimination. If you start discriminating, then every time you indulge, our mind will, Buddha will keep telling us, this was not right, this was not right. Then there will be a conflict. Then a Mahabharata war will start in our mind. So that is it's a slow step. Mahabharata war will wage for many, many years. And sometimes many, many births. And then eventually, your vasana chaya will happen by the continuous repetitive exercising of the buddhi. That is the plan of nature because the vasanas will eventually lead you to experiences that are dukkha pradam. So either you learn through the dukkha and correct your vasanas. But by the time new vasanas will come, the old vasanas may go, new vasanas. So some guidance and some planning is required. So if we start using buddhi, then you know, you will be able to see this. First step is to understand, yes, this is what is happening. Second step is to start watching. Initially we will fail. The vasanas will overpower us. By gradual ex exercising of our buddhi, we can come out of this chain of Ichha Dvesha. This, this is called in Ayurveda as Trishna, Ichha Dvesha Atmika Trishna. This is described in the Shari Rasthanam first chapter. Upadhahi Parahetur Dukkha Dukkha Spadaspada. This Trishna is otherwise called as Upadha. So it is said that just like a spider weaves the cobweb and gets trapped inside it, human, that is what Charaka says. Just like that, the human beings get entrapped 
in their own karma by not exercising their intelligence. So again, this is why Bhagavad Gita it is said, Buddha Sharanam and which please please seek refuge in your buddhi. Don't go by your sukhas and dukhas. So that is what is prayatnadi karma cheshtita muchiti. Because this Ayurveda is for the karma purusha. It is to bring shuddhi in karma. So only when there is karma shuddhi, you will be free from the chain of disease and death. So this is very deep Ayurveda, which you can see only in Charga Samhita actually. If you go to Ashtangrida and other textbooks, it is little bit more medical. Chikitsa Shastra Midam. Ashtangrida calls itself as Chikitsa Shastra. Whereas here it is Here it is told as Punyatamo Veda, Tasya Ayusha Punyatamo Vedo Veda Veda Mada. It's not just a Chikitsa Shastra. So that is why this is mentioned here. So I hope this point is clear. Just a second, there is some problem in yes. So now we come to Samavaya Samavayo Aprithak Bhavo Bhumya Dinam Gunair Mata Sanityo Yatrahidravyam. Na tatra niyato gunaha. So this is Samavaya. Yeah, that is that karma also, because what is happening in nature, the sun is. Swamiji has asked a question. And I will try to answer Swamiji with my understanding is that the sun is hot and its rays are very tikshna. So sun will continue to do its karma whether I come and stand out in the sun or not it will continue to do that. It will not say that okay oh poor fellow he has come out so let me just stop projecting my race no the fire is burning it will do its karma if i put my hand in the fire the fire will not and in exceptional situations have been mentioned like sita devi entered into fire and it didn't affect her but usually what happens if you put your hand in fire it will burn your hand so we have to understand the nature, bhava swabhava of the world and accordingly our karmas have to be controlled by us. So the karma independent of us, in order that it doesn't affect us, we have to do our correct karma. That is what Ayurveda tells us, dinacharya or sadvrittam. Ityachara samasena yam prapnodi samachanan. This is the achara which we as human beings have to do. If we do that, then the world will not hurt us. If you don't follow this achara, then you will lose ayus, arogyam, aishwaryam, yashas, and even sashwada loga will be lost. So, sadvartam has to be followed. So, sadvartam includes. Nagniskandham abhibrajet Nadin tare na bahubhyam Don't try to cross a river all by yourself swimming across the river. You will die. Don't enter, uh, jump into a fire. You will be killed. 
So avoid all sahasas. So world is like that. Don't go in front of a snake unless you are trained to handle it. It will bite. So the karmas, independent of our prayatna, ultimately speaking, if we don't do any karma, that is what Krishna says also, that Nahi kaschit jadu tishthatya karma krit. Nobody is standing without doing any karma. Even not doing a karma correctly is a karma. It is an act of omission. So jayad uh, karyade yavasha karma sarva pragrati jayad gunaihi. Sharira yatra bhi chate na prasiddheda karma naha. You cannot even live if you are not doing karma so that's why krishna says do karma don't escape so our prayatna should be in such a way that the karma that is happening independent of us will not affect us so it depends on us so if i am in i am feeling hot and i go near a river the river will cool me or I go under the shade of a tree, it will give me coolness. So the, the karma of the tree giving shade and cooling is independent of us. But to get that, we have to go under the shade. So when there is hot sun, if we move away from the shade and go into the hot sun, then I cannot blame the sun for saying that, no, it's how, see, how cruel the sun is, it is so harsh and it is, or you cannot tell to the tree that, oh tree, you are not giving me shade after having moved away from that. So all the things in the universe will do its own dharma. And if we work, do our prayatnas intelligently, then we will be get able to get the positive effects of the karma of everything in the world or else we will suffer negatively. I hope I was able to explain that question. So next we are coming to Samavaya. So it is said Samavaya Aprithak Bhavo Bhumyadinam Gunair Mataha Sanityo Yatrahidravyam Natatra Niyato Gunaha. So Samavaya Aprithak Bhavaha. This is very important to understand whether we are dealing with Dravya Guna or Karma. The relationship between Dravya and Guna is of Samavaya Sambandha. The relationship between Dravya and Dravya is not Samavaya Sambandha. Samavaya Samantha means Aprithak Bhava. When one is destroyed or Ayuta Siddhattva, when one is destroyed, the other is also destroyed. And it is based on this that Ayurveda use, use no, re, renouncing the result of action is for Samachittattva. The action result will always be there. See, even if you are a karma yogi, if you go and take a knife and cut your hand, <laughs> your hand will get cut. Because you are a karma yogi, the knife will not say, oh, he is a karma yogi, let me not cut his hand. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But if you are not a karma yogi, you will panic, you will cry, you, it will take a long time for you to come out of that injury but if you are a karma yogi how do, it is you have to decide whether the karma phala is going to affect you or not karmanyeva adhigaraste ma phaleshu kada jana you don't have an adhigara on the phala once you do the karma ma karma phala heturbhu you are not the cause for the phala of the karma so if I do a karma, the result will come. Now a karma yogi is 
indifferent to that result. That is the only difference. Karma Yogi accepts the result as Bhagavan Prasada. Sometimes it may be a Shubha result. Sometimes it may be a Shubha result. Both are same. If you are not a Karma Yogi, you will make a tantrum when you get don't get your expected result. Like a child, you will, you know, make a big fuss and a Karma Yogi will also get unwanted results. There is no guarantee that when you are a Karma Yogi, but how does the Karma not affect us? Not by because expected results are obtained, not because of that. Karma, karma, for a Karma Yogi, whether it is Sukha or whether it is Dukha, it doesn't matter. And that is, doesn't mean a Karma Yogi is taking all needles and pricking him and saying, see, I'm a Karma Yogi. <laughs> no, a Karma Yogi is also not self-torturing. He is he's thinking and doing the correct thing. But if a mistake happens, he's not disturbed. He learned from that process. That is what is called Karma Bhala Tyaga. I have given up the Karma. Mentally, I'm not looking at the karma, I'm looking on the action. So my action is getting perfect, better and better every day. Because my focus is on correcting my action, not on the fruit of my action. So you become a learner when you are a karma yogi. Many people think karma yogi means everything that you do will be like flower. Once you are a karma yogi, you take a lottery and you will win it. No. If you take a lottery, you may get into trouble also because, so you have to face it. A karma yogi is ready to accept the consequences of the action in a, with equanimity. Hatva va prapsyase swargam, jitva va bhokshyase mahim. This is what Krishna says to Arjuna. Arjuna, do your karma. Hatva va prapsyase swargam. If you are killed, Krishna doesn't promise Arjuna that he is going to win. He never says. He says, Hatva va prapsase swargam. If you are going to get killed, don't worry, you will go to heaven. Jitva va bhokshase mahim. On the other, so Arjuna is even tempted to die. Because Hatva va prapsase swargam. If I am killed, I will go to Swarga. If I am alive, Boksha say Mahim, you will only be on the earth. So which is better actually? So Krishna is telling Arjuna that both outcomes are good. In fact, death, if Arjuna is killed, we may think it is a failure. But actually you are going to heaven. Veera Murthy. So for a Karma Yogi, the Phala doesn't matter. It is the action that is important. Doing the right action is the important thing. And they are ready to face the consequences. If it's a mistake, they are very good and quick learners. So that is the concept. So samavayo aprithak bhavo bhumyadinam gunairmata sanityo yatrahidravyam natatra niyato guna. Samavayah aprithak bhavaha. So the guna and dravya are inseparably. So when you reach such a point, you will know that it is samavaya. Like madhurya rasa and madhur dravya, madhurya rasa and apple are having a samavaya sambandha. Because one is contained in the other. Sweetness and Glucose, for example, in another way. You cannot separate them. If you separate, you get glucose only, which is a substratum of sweet taste. That is a dravya. So when one is destroyed, the other will also get destroyed. So this is also important, disease and symptoms, for example. They are coexisting, is it not? When the disease goes, the symptom will go. Sometimes it is both ways, but always when the symptom goes, the disease may not go. 
anvaya vetirega sambandha is there so there this doesn't work what we are talking about samavaya is where ayuta siddhatvam one the cannot exist without the other when you see that then you know there is a samavaya sambandha so here example given is bhumi adinam gunair madah Bhumiyadinam guna means Gandhattvam in Prathvi. They are in a Samavaya Sambandha. Wherever there is Prathvi, there will be Gandha. Or wherever there is Gandha, it means there is Prathvi. So today we know that uh, smell is due to particles. We think smell is coming in a wireless way. smell is not wirelessly transmitted there are particles coming and falling on our this has been described in our shastras that is why vayu is called as gandhavah vayu is a gandhavah vayu is carrying the particles of smell carrying prithvi so when those minute parthiva particles come and fall on our olfactory epithelium that is when we get the sensation of smell so this samavaya to sanityo sanitya idi samavayo avinashi satya bi samavayinam dravyanam nashe samavayo na vinashyati यत्र द्रव्यम नियतम नित्यम यथा आकाशम न तत्र नित्य आकाशे भी अनियतो विनाशी गुण सो देर इज सी वेन यू वेन यू थिंक अबाउट समवाय यू मस्ट थिंक ऑफ समवाय इन नित्य द्रव्यास एंड अनित्य द्रव्यास आकाश इज ए नित्य द्रव्य बिकॉज इट इज ऑलवेज प्रसेंट other mahabudas are continuously through panchikarana they are going prithvi jalau viliyate jalam agno agno agnir vayu vayu akashe so amongst the mahabudas akasha is there as the base so even if a dravya is vinashi samavaya is nityam the bandha bit sambandha between gandha and prithvi is always nityam even if one particular dravya is destroyed that samavayatvam is present in other dravyas i hope that point is clear sanityo yatra hi dravyam na tatra aniyato gunah so if the dravya is not going to be destroyed that guna will also be there the guna will go away only if the dravya is getting destroyed so suppose i burn away all the glucose it becomes carbon you burn all the so the dravya nasha has happened then the sweetness you cannot get but as long as the dravya is there the sweetness will be there is that clear if that is not the case then it means suppose i mix milk with sugar if i can separate that sugar through some technology it may be possible it's possible because there are two dravyas there is no samavaya sambandha between that sugar and that dravya is that clear so samavayo aprathak bhavo bhumiyadinam gunair mata sanityo yatra hi dravyam na tatra niyato guna some people also say that there are निमुनेपंचदेदे
Is that clear? So Samavaya simply means the relationship between Dravya and Guna, which is inseparable. And that is why when we pick the right Dravya, we can be sure that that Guna will be there. But the, you may ask some questions here. I have uh, myself some questions since nobody is asking. See, suppose you take sandal. Sandal is a dravya, but sandal, the volatile oil in sandal is not always present. In some places, if you grow sandal, you won't get that smell. Do you know that? Yeah, it, does, it doesn't happen everywhere. That is why places like Mysore is very famous because the sandal growing there has very good smell. It has very rich volatile content. Guglu is a medicine used in Ayurveda. But it, it needs a desert land to grow well. It needs a desert land to grow well. So if it if you cultivate like for example if i grow it in kerala i won't get the guglu from that so then you may ask the question where is the samavaya sambandha so that is why we have to classify the dravya very very specifically so all chandana is not the same dravya according to ayurveda there is a samanyatvam but my that is why we call that Mysore sandal as Mysore sandal. Only in Mysore sandal that guna will be there. Not in other sandal. Not in Kerala sandal. In Mysore sandal you will get it. So similarly Gugulu coming from Rajasthan, Gujarat will, will, will have that. So we, we used to classify Dravyas like that. Based on where they are growing, based on their qualities. So, where there is the Samavaya Sambandha, that Dravya only we should use to get the result. See, Tulasi, why we call Tulasi as Krishna Tulasi? Because only the Tulasi which has black leaves will have the active molecules in that, which will produce the medicinal effect. No, it is not, it, it, see, it means that how you have to classify Dravya. Dravya is a Yatrashrita Karma Guna Karana Samavaya Tad Dravyam. So Dravya is to be defined based on the presence of that spectrum of Gunas, not by its appearance. So if you mistake many Dravyas as one, it is your mistake. You are not seeing that Vishesha, that distinction. So that is why this definition is important here. So you cannot put all sandal as same. In Ayurveda, we don't do that. If I get five, so even in Tipali, we have in our Roderick market, Tipali number one, Tipali number two, Tipali number three. They change, they call it in three different ways. Uttama, Adhama, Madhyama. Why they are doing that? Because they are, they are in principle, they are different Dravyas. If I use Pipali number three, I won't get the result of Pipali number one. Because the gunas are different. So to distinguish the gunas, even though they all look like Pipali, their gunas are slightly different. If only when there is samavayatva of the guna and dravya, that result will come. Only when I use Krishna Tulasi, I know that Krishna Tulasi has a samavaya sambandha with the gunas that I want for treatment. Harida Tulasi, the same Krishna Tulasi, if you grow in shade, leaves will become green. So we called in Sanskrit, we use. Yes, see. Here, that's why I read the commentary. Tattu na vyapakam napi vaisheshika madanu yai. You are now going to vaisheshika. Here we are talking about Ayurvedic way of explaining Samavaya. So don't mix up all these things. Each Shastra has its own purpose. Ayurveda Shastra is for treatment. So for treatment, for me, the Dravya that I am using should have that particular Guna, otherwise it will not produce the result.
Yeah, Mathura is Prithvi and Jela, of course. Both Prithvi and Jela are there. It comes, that is why if it was Jela alone, then when you add more Jela, it will increase. Jela alone cannot create Mathura Rasa. Jala and Prithvi will only create it. So only if both are in the right proportion, Mathura Rasa will come. Yes, all the, the trees go, growing in the right uh, place and when you collect it, it should be in the right season. Like for example, turmeric, it is called as Nisha, Rajani, Ratri. Why? It is, it is a very bright substance. Why should it be called Ratri, which is dark? Turmeric is so bright, so light. It's like the sun. Now we call it as gold, poor man's gold. But the reason is that turmeric, if you collect in the night, it is more medicinally useful. If you want to use turmeric for medicinal purposes, you must pluck it only in the night. A study was done in Bangalore where they found that the active constituents are at high concentration in turmeric when it is collected at night. So see the word Nisha was used for something which is as bright as the sun. If turmeric was black, then calling it night, Nisha, Rajani, all the synonyms of night, Sarvari, all these things are given to turmeric. It's very strange. Why? Because only in the night that Samavaya Sambandha is there between the Gunas and the Guna and the Dravya. So Ayurveda, this is today, you know, chemo taxonomy, you know, so many new branches are coming. Ayurveda recognized when and where to collect a Dravya in the right season, from the right soil, in the right stage of growth. Then only this the desired properties will be there. So Samavaya has been, yes, it applies to almost all, all the trees and condiments. The correct today, because of commercialization, people don't wait. Whenever they get a tree, they will cut it and make the medicine. That is why Ayurveda is not giving sometimes good results. That is the principle followed now. Yasya gasya taror moolam. Take any uh, trees, herb, uh, root or yena kena abhi peshita. Mix, mix with whatever is available. Yasmai kasmai pradadim. Give to anybody. Something will happen. Yadva tadva bhavishya. So this has become the... So, but traditionally they were very very careful. There was a whole Aushada Grahana was a very big procedure. All that is lost today because of commercialization, marketing. Arjuna is a plant which we use for cardiac ailments. And in our own institution, we checked, one of our senior scientists checked the samples of Arjuna tablets available in the market. And they found majority, almost all except one company, rest of the things did not have the active constituents in it. So they were simply selling Arjuna without the proper chemicals. Arjunolic acid which is supposed to be one of the active principles was not found in 99.9% .9 of the market samples. So are we not fooling people? How many people will be taking Arjuna with the hope that it will save their hearts? So these principles are being violated. So that is why, yeah, any, so that is the, if they can be separated, then they are not in Samavaya Sambandha. So you have to go to that point. That is the real Dravya. That is why we say Bhumya Dinam Gunair Mada. Panchi Krita Dravyas and Karya Dravyas are not always showing Samavaya Sambandha. 
because I may be able to de-sweeten some substance because it's a panchikrita substance. When you reach the point where no further separation is possible, when you try to separate, both will get destroyed. That is the point of Samadhi. So most of our uh, artificial substances, but some of the extracts like, you know, today glucose can be separated. So glucose is a more like a dravya which has some oil, some of the sweet taste, not things which contain glucose because you can separate the glucose from that. So that seems to be the basis. So for practical purposes, in Ayurveda, this is the practical use of Savvai Siddhanta, that when you are giving medicines to patients, you have to make sure that the Dravya that you are using has the Guna that it is expected to have, and that they are in Samavaya Samadha. If they are not in Samavaya Samadha, every time you use it, that Guna may not be there. So to specify that, our Acharyas specifically refer to substances Krishna Tulasi, or, you know, Parasika Yavani, which comes from Parasika Desha. Only then it will have that properties. So, you use only that. Don't use other things. Today we can do an HPTLC fingerprinting and check if the herbs or drugs have the necessary components. <laughs> So that's about Samavaya. So next we go on to Dravya. So this will, with once we understand Samavaya, so that is why the definition of Samavaya has been given first and then we are going to Dravya and Guna and Karma. Yatra Ashrataha Karma Gunaha Karanam Samavayi Yat Tadravyam. So, Dravya is the substratum of Guna and Karma, from which you are unable to separate the Gunas or Karmas. But you can do some samskarana of that Dravya. So, for example, mango in an unripe state behaves differently from mango in a ripened state. So, through samskara, the gunandara dhana is possible. That we must not confuse with the loss of samavaya. So, ripe mango has sweet taste, unripe mango has sore taste. So, which means we must consider un unripe mango as another dravya and ripe mango as a dravya which has undergone some samskara, the paka samskara. So, that's why in Ayurveda, when we use a dravya, it is very specific in what avastha, what stage we have to use. Pakkuamraha. Apakkuamraha. We specify that. Each are different dravyas. You cannot use a samanya there. You cannot say just eat mangoes without specifying whether you should use ripe or unripe mangoes. Both action will be different. So, Yatrashrita Karma Gunaha Karana Samavai Yat. Now, Samavai Karana means one Dravya can, when you are using a Dravya and creating another Karya Dravya, that same Gunas and Karmas through the Dravya will be seen in the result also. So, Samavai Karanam Chata Dhyat Svasamavedam Karyam Janayati. Guna Karmani Tuna Svasamavedam Karyam Janayata. So, if I want to convert, make milk sour, 
milk has to become sour it by through it is the dravya itself which changes it is for samavedam karyam what you can say dadhim janaiti so when milk turns into curd it is not the gunas the uh, the dravya itself is undergoing that change so they are the asamavai karanas etat karma vartum hi dravyasya gunadi panja padartha vyavritti matra lakshana kathana so kriya gunavat samavai karanam dravyam this is how vaisheshika says that that in ayurveda we have presented it as yatra ashrita karma gunaha karanam samavayet tat dravyam so when it is the dravyas can produce sajadiya or vijadiya karya dravyas so when it is sajadiya the same guna karmas will continue when there is a big change or a samskarana happens the guna karmas may change but it is dravyam dravyarambhagam na guna karmani yes so samavai karana means so we can read the commentary here because it explains the ayurvedic perspective karanam samavai yadidi samavai karanam yad dravya meva hi dravya guna karmanam samavai karanam so without that dravya the guna karmas cannot exist in the karya dravya is that clear so it is the dravya that is present as karana as well as karya the gunas just accompany it so if i am making milk peda with milk then it is a milk itself that becomes a milk peda and then the gunas of milk is also present in the karya dravya everything is happening through that dravya itself i cannot just pick up the gunas modern medicine is trying to do that because they are breaking down milk today we have de fattened milk all those things they are doing but there according to ayurveda what is happening is a dravya samskara is happening so what you are producing is a totally new dravya where gunandara dhana is happening whenever gunandara dhana happens what we call that samskara has happened so for example i don't know how many of you know rice and poha which is more healthier do you know which is more healthy yes modern medicine tries to modern medicine actually is trying to go to that point where the guna is manifesting and that is why they are fractionating everything but the problem is they are still dealing with fractions of the dravyas so they are not getting the full result you know if you use the dravya as a whole and if you use fractions there is a difference we cannot still claim that they have reached the guna they have they have only extracted a part of that dravya where that guna is probably seen in more concentration so even uh, i had also thought about this is modern method of extraction are they taking out the guna no but they are taking out the dravya because you will have something in your hand called glucose is it no it's a substance the guna cannot come in a formless way there is a dravya which is still carrying that guna i hope that point is clear for any guna there has to be a carrier that carrier is what we call as dravya so the between the dravya and the guna there is a samavaya sambandha so what was some point i was mentioning just before that I missed more. corn rice 
Huh? Oha and rice. Oha and rice, yes. Which is better? Do you have any idea? I learned about this not so long ago. Because being in South India, we are all rice eaters. Yes, poha is the better one. So, Ganesha you know, has such a unsatiable appetite. So, to satisfy him, poha was given. That's not, <laughs> that's not the only reason. It is a good diet for people who are weight conscious. There's a lot of iron content. It doesn't have the has a low glycemic index. It is not fattening like rice. So it's a good choice. Poha is a good choice. So just that rice by getting transformed to poha, it's gunas change. So we don't call it rice anymore. So when the guna changes, we have to call it as a different dravya. That's the point I want to highlight. Okay. So in Ayurveda, every dravya should be distinguished from the other based on the gunas. So too much of samanya is very dangerous. Then you miss the gunas. The quality of, so that's why we say good cashew, bad cashew, at least some distinction we will make. Today, uh, like cumin seeds and all are in the market after extracting the volatile oil. So it is a poor quality. It does not have the gunas because it has undergone some samskarana. So we have to distinguish. Whenever there is a samskarana or gunantaradhana change, we must call that dravya as a different dravya. That was how Ayurveda used. That is why we call like Shweta Kamala, Rekta Kamala, these are different. Although they are all sharing Kamala Samanyatvam, they are all lotuses, but by color, by where they grow, this sensitivity and this specificity must come into Ayurvedic Dravyaguna and in the Ayurvedic practice. Then only we can predict results we will get. We'll be, our results will be more predictable. Today I take Haridagi and then nothing is happening. It should give purgation. I am eating Haridagi 5, 10, 15, nothing happens. Something wrong with the Dravya itself. It does not have the Guna. So at least we will use Shreshta Haridagi or Nindidam. Some, some terminologies we use to distinguish the Dravya from each other. So it's all based on the concept of Samavaya. So what is a, why, why, what, how is a Dravya interesting for us? Yatra Ashrita Karma Gunaha. Am I interested in the Dravya or the Karmaduna as an Ayurveda physician? Can you tell me? What am I more interested in? Karma. Karma and Guna, yes. So there is no point, there is no use of the Dravya if there is no Karma and Guna in that. So a Dravya should be valued for the Guna Karma that it possesses. With which it is in a samavaya sambandha. So if that guna goes, then that dravya has already been destroyed. A rotten apple is not an apple anymore. Because that guna dravya nasha has begun to happen. It will be attended by guna nasha also. So any substance we are using, we must use it only in the state that it has its gunas and karmas. That is called, today we are doing this whole process is called quality control and quality assurance. That's the medicine that we are using have all the necessary qualities. That is the concept of Dravya and we are explaining this not from a Vaisheshika perspective. That's also important to understand. All this is being explained from an Ayurveda perspective here. For us, this is the goal. So next time when we take Haritaki, we should be able to check it and say, yes, this has got the necessary gunas. So it will do this karma. Then only we must use it. Vaidyas used to test every herb, every plant that they see. They used to check like this before using it in medicine. 
they did not have laboratories today i i just in our lab there was a discussion again today about tribala samples that we collected from so many pharmacies and when you do their hptlc spectrum you can see it's very different outside you look everything tribala ऑक्सीजन उटिटीन See, just like when you go to a vegetable shop, you know, you take a lady's finger, you know whether it is in the right thing. You just, you know, try to break it. Like that, so many methods were there. It was all in the oral tradition. It is lost now. So now we have to rely on the labs. So we have to demand for, and also because everything is done in a large scale, we are not able to verify the raw material. Also, so we have to show that fingerprint. Show that. make uh, you have to make a medicine in the correct way then create a chemical fingerprint and then make sure any medicine that is prepared it should match that fingerprint that is the only way we can do it now many of these herb collectors they have that tradition is lost are they documented in it by any chance no you are documented some are documented some textbooks talk about you know good quality of haritaki some herbs they have mentioned much of it is lost can you that please means... just a couple of those so that we can uh, try to use it when we read what is it i didn't get it um, um, whoever has documented it uh, is it possible for you to name no, of your no, no no you have to read see documented things are in common literature you can search some databases and get it some of the fruits like for example madana bhala which we use for emesis about that the how to collect the correct quality that is mentioned some parameters are given so only few are mentioned in the texts the rest see our textbooks were very brief so things that were uh karma cannot be taken out from dravya sir we will uh, discuss that karma in the next class so i hope that will become very clear neither guna nor karma can be taken from the dravya as the dravya undergoes some change samskarana what happens we will disc discuss when we study karma then there is a change in its guna and gunandara dhanam it is called so that is only the karma cannot be taken out because karma is, dravya is the substratum for karma without dravya there is no karma karma doesn't happen in air there have to be actors to do the action yeah so uh, applying to sumitra again we have lost a lot of this there has been what you call as knowledge erosion there has been what is called as resource erosion so i have witnessed that i have seen a lot of people dying in front and disappearing with nobody documenting that knowledge now we have to painfully build it up again but now the plus point is we have technology but the technology is very expensive there are many agencies we have generally drug control authority of india is monitoring this both for ayurveda and modern medicine and we have good practices it's called gmp good manufacturing practice but enforcement is not good the rules and regulations are there but nobody to make sure that it's always followed especially with ayurveda there are challenges even in modern drugs manufactured in india and such other places there are sometimes problems 
because everybody is doing it for business. If good checking is not there, everybody will do it in the wrong way. Even outside, this is happening once in a while. So that is because it is Kali Yuga and only one, one Pada of Dharma is there, three fourths are Dharma. So that's it. Okay. That's it for today. We'll continue tomorrow. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, sir. Professor. Sthapakaya cha dharmasya Sarva dharma swarupine Avatara varishthaya Rama Krishnaya te राम कृष्णा यते नमः